Next is our task number six, and we're going to be dealing with a well-known community called No Advertise. So we need to configure R3 to stop R6 from advertising its loop back to R4. We must only use one prefix list command, and we must not configure any other routers other than R3. So basically, we're going to have R3 telling R6 not to advertise its loop back to R4, and we're not allowed to do anything on R6 at all. Okay, and the way to do that here is to use a community, a well-known community called No Advertise. What No Advertise does is once the route is being tagged as it being advertised to a neighbor, that receiving neighbor will no longer advertise that route to any other neighbors. Okay, so whether it's eBGP or IBGP session, once R3 tells R6 or R6 received a route that's been tagged by the no advertise. R6 would not re-advertise that route out to its any other neighbors. And that's the function of the no advertise well-known community. So before we start on R6, let's do a quick show IPVGP neighbor 172.16.46.4 advertise and see what we currently advertise from 6 to 4. Right? And clearly the R6 is advertising R3 lead back addresses to R4, right? So what we're going to do on R3 is to tag its loop back with the well-known community. Let's do IP prefix list, R3, all loop back, permit. We need to use, it says a single prefix list, I believe, right here. So we need to come up with the prefix list. Since we have a loop back that's using contiguous subnets, it's just going to be slash 22 and less than equal 24. Okay, and then route map, we're going to call it 2R6. So as the route is leaving R3 to R6, we're going to match it by the R3 loopback. And then what we're going to do is set community. Question mark, you can see right here, no advertise. And the description for that is do not advertise to any peer. Okay, and in parentheses, it's a well-known community. So that's something that we can utilize. So no advertise. And again, don't forget to permit everything else. Now we go router BGP 200 neighbor 1606 with the route map of 2R6 out. Okay, every time you make a routing or route filter change, make sure you Refresh the route. So clear IBGP out. Okay, now going back to R6, we just show IP BGP just to use the R3 loopback 10, for example. So that's 3300. You can see it's being tagged by community of no advertise. Right? If you now check again of the routes R6 advertising to R4, you can see that all the R3 loopback interfaces or addresses has gone. Since of those routes are now being tagged by no advertise and R6 would not advertise that to any other routers. Okay, so that completes our task number six. Okay, moving on to our task number seven with the well-known community of no export. So we need to configure R7 to stop R1 and R2 from advertising its loopback 10 through 12 outside of AS100. Our R7 loopback 10 through 12 should still be reachable from within AS100. And we are not allowed to configure anything outside of R7. Okay, so here we have R7 advertising its loopback 10 through 12 to AS100. And we want to make sure that R1 and R2 does not keep advertising those addresses outside of AS100. Okay, and the way to do this is we're going to be leveraging a well-known community called no export. No export being once the routes is received, it should not be passed on outside of its AS or autonomous system. Okay, so the scope is kind of wider or larger than the no advertise, no advertise. The scope of that is just on a single router. No export, well-known community, the scope of that is within the AS. Okay, and that way we don't even need to touch R1 and R2 because it know by default any routes has been tagged by no export, it should not re-advertise through the eBGP session. So we're going to go through a very similar config on R7. And let me just show an IP prefix list. We already have a prefix list that match all of the R7 loopback 10 through 12. So we're just going to need to use that. 
come up with a wrap map called 2R2, permit 10, match IP address, prefix list, matching the loopback, and then we can set the community. And we have no export right here. And we also actually we also have a local AS, but that's dealing with the scope of that is actually within a confederation if you have a network that's built as part of confederation. So scope is a little smaller than no export, but it's bigger than no advertise. And the internet is pretty much everywhere. Okay, so no export. And then permit 20, allow everything. So BGP25123, make sure we get under the correct address family VRF, since it's under VRF, BGP, and then neighbor, dot two, wrap map two R2, out. Okay, make sure you're clear IP BGP, Yep, even the clear, I believe you need to specify that as well. This is where it gets confusing when you uh, have the VRF. So let's see if we can do that. Clear IP BGP VRF BGP and then we can just do uh, AS100 out. Okay, let's go. Uh, Let's go to the first top, our next top, R2, show IP BGP of a routes. Still receiving that. Oh, those uh, three loopback routes from R7, and then specifically look at 7700. It's already been tagged by a no export community. And same thing with R1, show IP BGP. If R2 receives it, R1 should receive that also. There you go. And now if you do a show IP BGP neighbor, just to see what kind of routes being advertised from R1 to R3. Advertise, you can see that the R7 loopback addresses is no longer advertised from R1 to R3. Okay, same thing should be seen on the R2. 123.4, advertise. Okay, no loopback addresses on router seven being advertised. Okay, so that's complete our task number seven. Okay, so moving on to our task number eight, which is our final task with the outbound route filter. So we need to configure R7 to instruct R2 to stop advertising a default route to it. And we should not create any prefix list on R2. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is R7 is gonna tell R2 through the mean of a outbound route filter to stop advertising certain routes. So basically R7 is going to push the prefix list that R2 is going to apply outbound towards R7. So that way they don't have to waste the link bandwidth for the route update. So basically they apply the filter as close to the source as possible, but the policy is being driven by R7. So what we need to configure is for R2 to first accept the prefix list that's going to be sent across by R7. And to do this, we do router BGP 100 neighbor 27.7 and this is under capability is to enable the outbound route filter capability right here with the option of ORF prefix list. And you can specify if you want this particular peer to be able to receive or sent or both. In this case, R2 is just going to be the receiving end, so we do receive. Looks like I have a typo right here. There you go. So now, getting onto the R7, R7 has to send a prefix list to R2, so I have to create a prefix list, but let's make sure that R7 in fact receive a default route right now. And you can see right here at the top of the table, we have a default route. So we need to create a prefix list called from R2. We're going to deny a default route. So that would be quad zero slash zero. And then we're going to allow everything else. And to do that, under prefix list, we're going to have to permit quad zero, zero, less than or equal to 32. That means every possible route. 
then we do router BGP 65123. Make sure we get under address family IPv4 VRF BGP. And then for our neighbor, 27.2. Uh, Again, capability ORF. Prefix list. This side is going to be the sender. So sent. And then we enforce the the prefix list. So you configured a regular prefix list route filter. So you, there's actually no difference at all. But instead of the prefix list being applied on the R7 side, that's going to be applied on the R2 side, which is on the other side of the BGP session. Okay, so now if you do show IP BGP, VPN, VRF, BGP, neighbor. Begin capability. And let's see, scroll up. You can see right here, as soon as we configure that ORF capability, there's a capability change and it kind of bounced their neighbor automatically. And when you do the show command right here under the VPN v4 unicast, we've got our outbound route filter with the incoming prefix filter from R2. So let's try to do a show command one more time and see if that works or not. Looks like it's still not quite working because we're still receiving that. So let's take a quick look at the route, uh, route configuration real quick. You might have to uh, clear the BGP session just to be on the safe side. And that is clear IP BGP. Let's go ahead and clear them all. Give it a second. Okay, it's to compare to what we have earlier right here, we have our outbound route filter sent. So I should already been sent from R7 to R2. That means if we do another show command, you can see that the default route has now disappeared from the BGP table. So we know that it's working. So R7 just told R2 to stop advertising a default route to it. But if we hop over to R2, and do show IP BGP neighbor 16.27.7 begins the, uh, the capability. You can see down here the mode is received and it has so far received two entries. And that's because we configure two lines of prefix list that's been sent from R7 to R2. Okay, we can just to see if there's any match. Not sure if it will work or not, but prefix. Yep, we can see everything else is uh, matching, but not the default route because R2 is the one that's doing the denying of the route being advertised. So that's pretty much complete our task number eight. So we have covered quite a bit in this lab, as you can see, and hopefully you guys learned a lot as well with the route filter. And that's pretty much wraps up our video on BGP with route filter. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.